Hey there, Canonites. Welcome back to another issue of Cannon Fodder. There's definitely some exciting stuff to talk about, so let's not waste any time and dive in. We open with a brief talk about Halo Wars 2. Don't get too excited as nothing new is really discussed. The game was only just announced, so it's a bit too early to talk about details. Still, it's something to look forward to next year. The next section is about the new campaign footage from the level Blue Team, and I love how Grimm transitioned to it. Quote, now, if only there were a brand new chapter in the Master Chief's epic journey to hold you over until Halo Wars 2. Oh wait, there is! See, 343 listens to the fans. But in all seriousness, it was hilarious to see the sentiment, one I've seen shared among many, myself included, acknowledged here. There are genuinely people out there that wish 343 could postpone Halo 5 in favor of Halo Wars 2, and I can't blame them. I really want that game. But anyway, back to the article. This section is, as I mentioned, about the new gameplay footage that was revealed this week. It features some stuff that we've seen and plenty more that we haven't. The Hunter stuff is particularly cool, as it seems 343 is working to make these behemoths even more threatening than ever. And of course, space battles. You can click the annotation to check that out, or look for the link in the description box. The next brief section is basically an ad for Josh Holmes' developer diary, which we talked about last week. It's a nice look at the development of Halo 5's Musketeer system and a much more comprehensive look at why local co-op has been removed. Link in the description box below. The next section finally gets into some lore as Grimm gives us descriptions for two of Halo 5's maps, Fathom and the newly revealed Coliseum. Fathom is something we have talked about before back in July, but we'll talk about it here again. In short, the map is set on the UNSC Fathom, an underwater research station on the water world of Beta Gabriel, a world in the Epsilon Eridani system, aka the Reach system. The station is tasked with searching for the remains of a Covenant carrier called Splendid Intention. During the Covenant War, this ship was infiltrated by a group of Spartans attempting to retrieve plans for a new weapon that would supposedly make glassing beams obsolete. Things didn't go as planned, and Splendid Intention was down in the southern seas of Beta Gabriel. So the big thing to discuss with this map is this mention of a Spartan team and their mission. The mission in question would have had to have taken place between July 24th and August 30th, between the first sighting of Covenant activity in the Epsilon Eridani system and the final fall of the planet Reach. Now, interestingly, when Game Informer first talked about this map, the description they gave specifically mentioned a team of Spartan 2s. But this article only says Spartans. I can't help but wonder if that may mean something. If it was a team of Spartan 2s, the only logical option would be Black Team, since they were present in the Epsilon Eridani system during the Battle of Reach and Tribute, but were not being prepped for Operation Red Flag like the majority of Spartan 2s. If it's just a team of Spartans, it could be one of the other Spartan 3 teams mentioned in Halo Reach's campaign. Sir, that true about Gauntlet Red and Echo teams assigned to civilian evac ops? Those are also of note is that we'll be visiting Fathom during Halo 5's campaign. Whether it's Osiris or Blue Team is unknown at this point, but I was reminded of the opening scene from the Fall of Reach animated series trailer, which shows Blue Team on an unknown glassed world. In the background, we can very clearly see Reach's moon. So, Blue Team, during the time of Halo 5 or thereabouts, did return to the Reach system, perhaps even visiting the Fathom research base. Up next is a new map, Coliseum. The map is set in a Forerunner training arena where warriors would hone their skills to combat the Flood. The description is as follows. The first incursions of the Flood into the Forerunner Outer Territory signaled the beginning of a centuries-long war. Although they immediately summoned the full strength of their navy, most warrior servants recognized that this conflict would be won or lost on the ground. Hidden safely in the shadows of the Burn, this military compound provided a necessary proving ground, strategically honing those who were destined for sacrificial glory. There's not too much to talk about, but it's an interesting setup. By the way, if you haven't read the Forerunner saga, a Burn is an area of space that the Flood have taken over. So, if I'm reading this right, this facility was hidden in Flood territory, or at least near it. No better teacher than experience, right? The next section is probably the highlight of this article. The full panel from the San Diego Comic-Con is finally available to watch, although, as of this recording, it's only available through the Halo channel. Officially, at least. So, as I promised, let's go through it and break it down. Here are the highlights from what was revealed at the panel. As you have heard over and over, and I mean that in the best way, Halo 5 is built around the co-op experience. Except when it comes to split screen, but anyway. This can lead to minor differences in the campaign experience. As an example, narrative designer Morgan Lockhart noted that finding something in the game world as one Spartan versus as another would result in slight differences in character moments. Morgan also noted that Tanaka's experience surviving a glassing would play into the campaign during a mission to a colony, and Vale's knowledge of Sanghili culture would play into the sections on Sanghelios. 
Stuff like that is what I'm personally looking forward to above anything else in this game. As you likely know by now, there will be a second season of Hunt the Truth, starting next month, leading straight into Halo 5's launch. Creative director, and I'm gonna butcher this name, Noah Etchin, says that we'll see a darker side of Oni during the second season. Considering what Oni's done, that's terrifying. Interestingly, Hunt the Truth was originally going to be a five-day long story that filled the gap between the bullet trailer and the two live-action trailers a week later. But the marketing group wanted to do more and, well, the rest is history. The first mission of Halo 5 is about Osiris hunting down Halsey and she will play a major role in Halo 5's story. I had guessed a while ago and I could almost say confirmed at this point, that scene with Halsey interacting with Captain Lasky, Roland, and Sarah Palmer very well may take place immediately after that first mission but only time will tell. Finally, Spartan Ops and Firefight won't be returning as you've heard. So, those are the highlights. There's really no point in going into any more detail in this video since a lot of the details have already been reported on and these really are the major things. The panel itself, of course, has a lot more detail and other discussions, so I encourage you to check it out yourself. Again, at the moment it's only available through the Halo channel. Unless someone recorded it and put it up on YouTube, which is probably what happened. But you know me, I like to support the official sources. And with that, we wrap up the main article and come to the new universe entries. This week we have the Type 55 Directed Energy Rifle Advanced, or Storm Rifle, and the Z040 Attenuation Field Generator Localized, or Pulse Grenade. There's not a whole lot to really discuss this week. The Storm Rifle was created by the Lodum Armory as a replacement for the Plasma Rifle and Plasma Repeater. Interestingly, the name of the manufacturer shares the clan name of a Sanghili we've met before, Thel Lodom. This was the Sanghili Major from the package, the one who almost bested the Master Chief in combat until... I had him! Commander, you fool! A thousand hells await you! Still get chills. Anyway, we wrap up with the Pulse Grenade, a forerunner grenade that projects an ionized pulse that would damage and disintegrate organic matter within its range. And that does it for today. Check out the videos and articles mentioned today, links in the description box, head on over to the Halo Archive to discuss, and be sure to check out the full Halo SDCC panel on the Halo channel. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.